Most people, when they're practicing their double haul, have a rough time with the angle of the rod. The angle of the rod. That's why I'm having you watch over your right shoulder for practicing. Keep that angle. In this next segment, I want you to pay particular attention to the angle of the rod both on the back cast and the front cast. Now we're going to, for camera use, we're going to be watching a little square right here, so you're not going to be worried about where my line is going. Watch my right hand and my left hand. Right hand being, watch the angle my rod starts and stops at. I need this angle here, not this angle to make my front cast. So the big trick is, with my left hand, I'm pulling away from my reel, holding this angle, making this hand come up to meet this one. Holding this angle. Pull away, hold this angle, pull away, hold this angle. Pull away, return, away, return. The old rubbing the belly, batting the head trick, right? See what I'm getting at? So watching this angle. The big problem that people have is this. Watch my right hand. I'll pull back with my rod. The right hand has a tendency to want to come up to the center. And that's why a lot of people have trouble learning the double haul. They do this. They pull away and the right hand will come up to here. Now you don't have enough angle to make your front cast. So that's a real big problem. The reason that we recommend you throwing sidearm so you can watch this cast. Remember that's a casting stroke and watch this cast. Most people have far more strength than they ever need to be able to cast long distances. Remember now, with a double haul, we're dividing the power between two hands. Watch how little effort I'm putting into these casts using a double haul. It doesn't take a real violent action to double haul. It just takes a little pull release, pull release. Now, I'm holding about 30, 40 feet in the air. Now, I can do this efficiently, or I can do it like this. A lot of people want to do it like this. When you start learning a double haul now, it's just a little pull, relax. Pull, relax, pull, relax. You don't need to tip the canoe over or the kayak or hit your other partner in the head. Just a real easy motion, just a short, crisp cast. The haul is initiated toward the end of your casting stroke, not the beginning. Toward the end, the last moment. Very efficient way to cast. Let's watch Robin demonstrate the double haul. An important factor about fly casting is that you don't want to carry more line in the air than you can handle. Uh, if you want to make a 60-foot cast, you don't want to carry 50 feet of line in the air and shoot 10. You want to carry maybe 30 feet and shoot 30. The way to do that is by increasing the line speed, and that's accomplished by doing a double haul, H-A-U-L. See what I'm doing with my left hand? just giving a little tug. As I make my cast, I pull away from the rod, and as I complete my cast, both forwards and backward cast, I'm back at the rod with my left hand. This is called a double haul. Double because you're doing it on both your front cast and your back cast. It's amazing the amount of line speed that a double haul, just this little six inch tug, can build up. And it can carry your line out to shoot almost a whole fly line. Just like that. Here's another use for the haul, using it with a roll cast. The haul, H-A-U-L, can be used for overhand casting like this, but also when you're roll casting, if you want a little more acceleration, watch, I'm holding firmly with the left hand. As I come down, I'll pull away. Again, I'll come back, stop, pull away. That preloads your rod gives you a lot more acceleration. Even on a backhanded roll cast, over here, palm out, over this shoulder, you can still haul that backhanded roll cast. It gives you a little more acceleration. Pull, release. You can actually almost shoot a little bit of line. Watch this now. Watch my left hand come down, pull it. Now there's a roll cast going a little bit further by using the haul technique. I'm hauling and shooting line. I couldn't do that if I didn't haul the line. Now there's about a 50 foot roll cast by using the haul technique. Learn that word, it's your best friend. Okay, now we know how to cast further, we've developed one other problem we have to overcome. It's pretty simple 
explanation for this. We don't want to step on our excess line here in the boat because it flattens your line out and it'll sure ruin it over a short period of time. Also, if you're in a stream, you don't want to have your excess line piled up in the river so the current takes it down river. One way I found, short of getting a stripping basket, is I mend the line over each finger in succession. I'll show what I mean here. I've got one loop down here now that I stripped in. I drape it over my little finger and my ring finger. I always strip from this point right here because that causes action on the fly. Now I'm going to strip over my second finger like this. I'll grab it here, strip another couple little loops in, tend it with my third finger like this, bring another loop in. Now I have my fourth finger. The trick is here is never let two loops go at one time. What I'm going to do is shoot line now. I'll show you how to let them out in succession. So let them go one at a time like that. You'll end up with a lot better line and won't ball up on your guides here. You're still going to do it sometime, but you got a lot better odds by letting one go at a time. Good way to tend line. The problem with making longer casts, which you now know how to do, is as your loop gets out toward the end near your fly, you're dissipating a lot of energy out there and you have a problem with what we call turning that fly over, straightening it out. Let me show you a method that I use to turn that fly over at the end. Remember now, shooting line, never release it with your left hand. I'm doing my haul. I'm shooting my line, sliding. I stop it before it hits the water. My raw tip is down. I'm in control of my cast. That's going to get you a lot of fish. Let's show you how to use that in some real conditions now. Pick it up. Bing. Lay it out. Pull back. Your fly setting. Now watch this shoot cast here. I'm going to shoot line. Just as my fly hits the end, I'm going to pull back on my fly with my left hand. Never release the line with your left hand. Pick the line up, shoot it back, go forward, let it shoot, pull back. Just before the fly hits, it'll help turn that fly over. If I didn't do that, here's what it may look like. You'll cast it out if you let the line go like this. You hit the water and then you got to strip maybe five or six or seven or eight times. I'm still not caught up with the slack. That's a slack cause by not pulling it back. Again, never release the line with your left hand. Pull it back like this, shoot it, let it slide through, pull back. Now your fly is tracking the minute you hit the water. You're in fishing position. Let it slide, pull back, fly lays out. Real handy, useful tool, and that again will get you a lot of fish. One of the commitments that we've made in producing these videos is to keep you, the viewer, informed of new innovations within the fly fishing market. It's obvious as you get into fly fishing, you're meeting fly lines and fly reels. The next section, I think, could save you a lot of money. Here is one of the neatest innovations in fly fishing that I've seen in years. On this particular trip, I bought a four weight rod, five, six, and seven, depending on wind conditions and what I have to use. Now, with each line size, I have to have a floating line, an intermediate sinking line, a full sinking line, and a 10-foot sink. I tell you, this has really been fun, but I'd like to take that yarn off, put a real fly on, and do some real fishing. Come on and join me. Pull it up. Now watch, I'm going to have to use a lot of haul to get this one. Ooh, there. It's about the extent of a four weight being able to cast, right? Okay. You jump right beside it. Now I want to get another four or five feet out. Here's 70 feet of line off the water. One shot. Pull it. Take the slack out. Right on him. Right there. Come on. See, boy, that's a violent hit. Oh, that's a nice little fish. Holy mackerel. That's that traveler's sedge. Look at that. I can't get on my reel here because he's running too fast. So I'll play him by hand here. You have to watch the stuff in the boat. Holy mackerel! Did he jump on that? Ah. I'll tell you, they look like a 10-pounder when they jump on those edges. I always tell people it's like a five-gallon bucket of water jumping over. Oh, nice pretty little fish. But, uh, 
He hit like a 10 pounder, didn't he? Okay. I'll just release him by hand here. Let me see. I'll slip it over my right shoulder here. Bring it down. Always keep him in the water. It's a barbless hook, fortunately, on that. These are nice little cam loops. Try to get them up here for a little shot. I like to hold them upside down. It calms them down a little bit. See that brackish water, how dark those fish are? That one's right in the maxillary. Okay. Okay. There's that little sedge fly. About a 14 sedge. A little, I took the whiskers off the front because there's a crosswind blowing. Kind of handy little rascal. Well, I enjoyed that one. I don't know about you. That was about an 80 foot crosswind cast with a four weight. That's about as much as you want to do in here. I got a kick out of that. At least we got to catch a couple of fish, right? Now what we're going to show you is what we reviewed in part one is trajectory, trajectory, pl casting plane. Also we're going to work on what we call the pullback where your fly straightens out and you're pulling back with your left hand to accelerate your fly. Okay, remember, trajectory is a plane of path, the pullback for laying the fly over. We have a case here now where we have fish jumping over here about 35 to 40 feet next to the bank. And let me show you a little bit about that trajectory in action here. What I'm doing, I got a dry fly on a little, about a 16 humpy. I'm going to cast a little bit severe to dry my fly off. You notice I have a high back, low front cast. It's just short of that log over there. Don't release the line with your left hand, pull back just as it hits and your fly is